Uh, for many, of course, in Ethiopia, for many Ethiopians that live close to the country's border with Eritrea, the news that Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed had been awarded the 2019 Nobel Peace Prize has been greeted with skepticism. Some say they have failed to see concrete improvements to the tense situation along the border with reports of Ethiopians being detained by Eritrean soldiers. Take a listen. When Zaid Aragawi learned that Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed won this year's Nobel Peace Prize, her first thought was her brother Alem, who is languishing in jail across the border in Eritrea. He crossed over five months ago, carrying wood for an Eritrean businessman, exactly the kind of trade that people in the border region hoped would flourish, after Abi and Eritrean President Isaias Afiworki signed a peace deal last year. But Eritrean soldiers arrested Alem Arigawi without explanation, making him one of the scores of Ethiopians who officials say have recently been taken into custody by Eritrean security forces. For Ethiopians like Zaid Arigawi, the detentions are the most troubling sign that the peace deal, the main reason Abi was awarded his Nobel Prize, has yet to be fully realized. If there is no free movement from both sides, what is the point of the peace deal? They say there is peace. However, we have got big problems along the border. Abi's attention is currently consumed by ethnic and religious clashes that broke out last week in the capital Addis Ababa and Ethiopia's Oromia region, leaving nearly 70 dead and highlighting divisions within his ethnic Oromo support base. Meanwhile, hundreds of kilometers north, frustration with its Eritrean deal is mounting in cities and towns nestled among the steep escarpments of Ethiopia's northern Tigray region, the area most affected by the 1998-2000 border war and the long bitter stalemate that followed. Residents of Ethiopia's northernmost villages complain of a lack of progress on demarcating the two countries' shared 1,000-kilometer or 600-mile border. Eritrean refugees who still cross into Ethiopia by the hundreds each day, according to the United Nations, note that peace has not moderated the behavior of Isaias, widely considered one of the world's most repressive leaders. And nearly everyone laments that bilateral relations hinge on meetings between Abiy and Isaias, with little input from people on the ground. We can say that peace is stuck between the earth and the sky said Ahmed Yaya Abdi, an Eritrean refugee who has lived in Ethiopia since the war. The demilitarization of the border, especially on the Ethiopian side, is the main benefit of peace cited by most people in the region. It has permitted some Ethiopians to cross for weddings and funerals in Eritrea with little harassment from the security forces. But Yosef Misgina, an official in the town of Dawan, says he receives regular reports of Ethiopians being detained, jailed and beaten in Eritrea, often after they are caught transporting construction materials and other goods. Among them were 13 traders who were taken into custody just days before Abiy won the Nobel Prize, two of whom remain behind bars. And of course, you shall see also the editorial cartoons that we had uh, from uh, Gado on Ethiopia, the, the fragile peace. And this is it. Uh, that now, he's walking on a tight rope right now. And you can see him holding the, the dove, a symbol of peace there. And uh, what is happening down is, you know, the tribal uh, skirmishes in Ethiopia right now. Let's just begin uh, with uh, our panelists to discuss the fragile peace in Ethiopia with Abi right now. And uh, given that you got this particular Nobel Peace Prize, and then we have these skirmishes just doggedly following that particular peace prize, you think this was a deliberate effort maybe from some of the opponents of uh, Abiy's regime? Dr. Mustafa. Yeah, Dibal, I think first of all, the question, uh, did uh, Abiy deserve this prize? Uh, and, and for me, as we discussed last week and the previous, is yes, he, he, he really deserved that prize. And the Nobel Peace Prize um, is given to both those people who have really done well in peace building, peacemaking, yes. and also those people who hold a promise mm. 
a promise to a country. Abi is really that person. Within two years, he had done a lot for his country and the region, and he also holds that promise. Uh, I, I, one of the committee members for the Nobel Peace Prize is somebody I know very well. Yeah. I've, I've, I worked with him for six years. And uh, uh, the way they work is, is very meticulous, uh, uh, Dibal. Uh, and I could see in his head, mm -hmm. in, his, in his mind, why they really chose this, this guy. The Horn of Africa is probably one of the most important geopolitical zones on Earth today. And here is a man who is struggling, who took a country from uh, a deep mess. But that does not mean that there are no challenges. There are so many challenges in Ethiopia today. Mm -hmm. The ethno-religious uh, yeah. tensions, yes. um, discrimination, uh, uh, all these are going to, uh, Abi is going to have to deal with these issues um, inside Ethiopia. So the internal challenges that we see in Ethiopia is really going to, uh, uh, if the if the ethno-religious and particularly the ethnic uh, issues within Ethiopia are not going to be dealt with very in a, in a sober manner, yes. then it's, it's going to be very difficult for um, Abi, mm -hmm. um, and it will even uh, um, it's, it's going to undermine his efforts in the region uh, to try and uh, 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 bring about more peace. Yes. Um, now. When we, when we are talking about uh, some of the elements that, uh, uh, in terms of Ethiopia, Eritrea, a uh, peace talk, and that's one of the main uh, um, elements that actually made him to win that peace prize. Uh, these issues are, will continue, and, and there will be these small, you know, the detentions. We also have challenges between Kenya and occasionally Ethiopians, you know, run into Kenya. Yes with uh, whether it's militia or, 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 or the army. And uh, Kenya and Ethiopia try to resolve these issues diplomatically, as I suppose Eritrea and Ethiopia are going to address those issues diplomatically. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the Nobel Peace Prize itself, um, uh, you know, the, the, the challenges that we saw in Addis Ababa the other day, uh, uh, I think they will continue. But the promise that uh, Abi still has inside Ethiopia itself uh, 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 primarily is something that uh, uh, we need to watch and he has opened those spaces. The freedoms that Ethiopians are enjoying today is really because of uh, this man. The ideology um, that Abi is espousing now is something that I think uh, uh, Ethiopians will need to support rather than to really go back to this ethnic uh, tribal uh, um, vendetta that has been there for such a long time in Ethiopia. All right, let's hear from uh, Peter Kagwanja, and mm. uh, we can put into perspective also, and we know uh, we've talked this uh, a good game here with the panel on the federal system of government in, in Ethiopia. How can it also maybe help, uh, or how can it be done away with so that maybe people can see a modicum of peace uh, in uh, Ethiopia as it is? Because we thought now Abi is a stabilizing figure. Uh, mm -hmm. in Ethiopia and you will bring to bear you know mm -hmm. harmony what he's been doing of course uh, with other countries around the region as well. Mm. Uh, uh, um, I, let me make some disclosures because I guess uh, there are a couple of Ethiopian colleagues possibly <laughs> including the um, ambassador who might be watching mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and it's interesting because um, about two or three months ago I published an article in my uh, weekly quorum uh, where I said a base Ethiopian revolution is unraveling. And many people uh, got concerned. I'm, I'm a scholar in this region, and the argument has, I mean, th that caused a lot of repos and mm -hmm. concern in Addis Ababa. And I had the opportunity to share my perspectives with colleagues in Addis Ababa at, at the, the highest level that I could reach. Yes. A and my, my, my issue was not risk, basically to deride or weaken or undermine a sister nation. Mm -hmm. The whole idea is that we live here, right. and I said in the article that Ethiopia is a big dam that if it bursts, we all are drowned. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I would be more concerned about what is happening in Ethiopia than what is happening in America. Yes. And morally and uh, from a conscious point of view, I think what is happening in Ethiopia would be of my concern. Mm -hmm. But in the same article, we said that uh, Abe is the closest you come to an African Obama. That's right. mm -hmm. Because he has what it takes, not only to unify Ethiopia, but to make a huge impact on peace 
in the region. Mm -hmm. We say it in the same. But historically, you have to recognize the dynamics within the country that are likely to uh, jeopardize peace. And that is the work of a scholar, yes. whether you are, you, you are a son of a king, a, a husband of the queen, or whoever, whoever you are. It is your responsibility, and you have a moral uh, burden to expose that. When, the, when, the, uh, when Abe was awarded the, the, the Nobel uh, Peace Prize, I wrote in, in the same same quorum, and I said, kudos Abe, but Nobel, Nobel team should reward African institutions. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the, the reason I said uh, kudos Abe mm -hmm. is because I think, and I believe from the depth of my heart, that Abe deserved that award. Mm -hmm. Anybody who was observing Ethiopia in the month of March, and I was with the Minister of Peace, who was my boss in one of the consultancies I was doing, the current Minister of Peace in Ethiopia, yes. uh, uh, my, my, my friend and mentor. And he was very concerned in Nairobi Crown Plaza and was saying, I hope Ethiopia will be able to do what Kenya has done. This was in March. Mm -hmm. the, and he was saying, by that time, Kenya had just had the handshake. And he thought and he hoped that Ethiopia would have a handshake. So when Abe came up in Ethiopia, mm -hmm. it was such a, I mean, a, breath, I mean, a fresh of breath air. Yes. And it was such a relief for many of us in the region. Mm -hmm. And when he went on now to have a hard shake with his with Ethiopia's nemesis after walking I think that what just blew our imagination mm -hmm, mm -hmm. nobody could ever have thought that would happen at all because we know what that tension between the two powers had done to peace in a region across the region not only in Ethiopia and in Eritrea but the proxy wars mm -hmm. and all the manner of instabilities in the region so uh, so when the Nobel Peace Prize, I mean, uh, Nobel team decided to award him, the, to give him the, the award, yes. first and foremost, as, as, a, as a citizen of this region, it was such good news for many of us. As a citizen of this region, let, let me finish. Two, rewarding him on the basis of um, the Eritrea-Ethiopia peace deal yes. was a sort of an acknowledgement of courage and bravery. I mean, moral courage first and foremost. And remember, Ethiopia pulled back from its almost 10 years or 20 years of a position, which was hardlined. Mm -hmm. So it, it, on that point, he, he came out as a quintessential diplomat. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that we must recognize that. But we must also recognize why did the, uh, the, 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 the Nobel Peace uh, team give him this? It's not because that this uh, peace cannot unravel. It is an encouragement mm -hmm. that Abe, what you are doing is good. Go on that line. What you are doing in the region, in Sudan, in other parts of the region is good. Go on with that region. But remember, this region is itself is a very difficult region. And there are so many lad mines, there are so many pitfalls. I think that's what it's all about. Okay, Ahmed Ashi. <coughs> um, I would like to disagree with our eminence, Greece. Yeah? <laughs> And um, I think that, uh, <coughs> notwithstanding what Professor Kagwanja has said, I think that it's really important for us to understand uh, um, the context of uh, Ethiopian history uh, as a way of looking at what signposts are there to the claim that it's unraveling. Um, of course, there are, you know, there are existential dangers um, to Ethiopia over this transition. But if there are people who are nationalistic, if there are people who have long stood for the idea of Ethiopia, uh, without going into the content right now as to the divisions and the, and the blatant rights of abuses and all these things, one of the things that I've always found really refreshing is this sense of Ethiopianness about the people of Ethiopia. I think um, over the period of the last, say, 50 years, or maybe the last 40 years, there have been several groups that have taken over Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. But there's always this, been this constant that we should not let this country go down the drain. Mm -hmm. If you remember Mengistu uh, Haile Mariam, when the TPLF and uh, the other groups were taking over Addis Ababa, 
and Cohen uh, was negotiating the deal to get Mengisto out. Yes. It was in contradistinction to the Somali general Mohammed Siad Bari and the Somali people who went and destroyed the country over, this, over their transition to democracy mm -hmm. while the Ethiopians did not. Mm -hmm. Of course, the international community was paying, was buttressing the Ethiopian transition and they were not doing that in Somalia. Of course, that's a, that's a, that was there. So I think that there's this constant thread of a, a certain nationalism that goes on in Ethiopia and, and it's in its political class that does not, is not going to allow for this country to um, explode. And I agree with Professor Kogwanja when he says that if it explodes, the dam is say we will all sink here. It'll, they will all come all, all the way to Nairobi. So that's one point. The second point I want to make that's very critical is that Abiy is a man of the system. Mm -hmm. He was the head of the intelligence. Mm -hmm. He was, uh, he's been brought up by the TPLF. He's been brought through the ranks and brought up to this stage today. However, the mentality in which the TPLF and the other groups thought that Abi was going to pursue was toppled by what Abe has done. And I believe that in the later, in the early part of this 21st century, and from his particular generation, I think that is probably the most outstanding leader we've had. Mm -hmm. And this Nobel Prize is just a, a catch-up to the mm -hmm. transition uh, that is going on in Ethiopia. I mean, these people are recognizing what's going on mm -hmm. after the fact, so we should not put too much uh, this. to this uh, Nobel Prize <laughs> thing. Uh, he more than deserves it. The third point, Debal, is um, you see, uh, it is an example that after hundreds of years with Ethiopia being a sort of hamitic nation, that in one breath something explosive as this can happen and transition can happen in this way. Yes. And right now, nothing really serious has happened in Ethiopia. Yes, there's been clashes. Yes, there's been deaths. Yes, there's been demonstrations. Yes, there's been this. But by and by, uh, Mr. Abiy has managed to hold the transition and the constituent assembly is coming, the constitution is coming, and elections are coming 2020. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a marvelous um, uh, postscript to uh, what is happening. Before I give it to Professor Medamba, I'd just like to say that there is a man called Mohammed Jawara, who was a head of the uh, of a media group and uh, one of the leaders of the revolution. Um, uh, the yeah, political parties are coming. The uh, constituent assembly is coming. The constitution is coming. It, uh, I would like the panel would like, and I think most of my, my panel would agree with me, is that for him to hold his horses until the elections come and if he wants to be prime minister then he could take over through a political party rattling uh, abby right now in uh, in in addis ababa is going to cause um, a problem and it, and that's a problem that um, the the parties there don't need right Thank now you. all right and of course also he's uh, uh he's thrown his heart in the ring already uh, yeah. saying that he's going to run for for, for that particular position yeah. uh, next year. So yeah. we eagerly waiting to see what yeah. that will happen as well. Professor Naomi Damba. Uh, uh, Dubal, I agree with Hasi um, uh, significantly to, uh, on a number of things he's talked about. I, I want to talk about two factors uh, that are sort of interwoven uh, in this very, very complex uh, environment. Mm -hmm. First of all is international dimension. Uh, international factors. Uh, the anything in Africa right now, um, when you cough, when you wake up, will be caught between the U.S., mm. Russia, mm. and Chinese. And they all have stake in whatever is going to go on. Mm -hmm. uh, the conference that happened in Cho uh, what called Sochi, Sochi. 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 Mm. Uh, was not by uh, uh, just a conference. It was a conference that meant Russian, Russian, uh, uh, eventual Russian entering in Africa in a very um, uh, proactive and also aggressive way. Uh, whichever way that, uh, um, that uh, Ethiopia decide to go, uh, if you start buying a lot of Russian tank, uh, Trump will not be happy. 
Um, there is a lot of Americans, a lot of Ethiopians who are Americans who are very engaged and they will not be happy to see this man succeed uh, in there to the extent that Africa would like him to do. Uh, this fellow has done incredible, uh, uh, incredible mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. uh, venturing into Eritrea and very quickly turning it around. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a picture of him and the Eritrean president and Somalia president riding in the same limousine at the back of the limousine. Mm -hmm. That was uh, unthinkable, never unheard of. But he's doing it. His role in Sudan is well known uh, from that standpoint. Mm -hmm. Now, coming to domestic factors, which is really the most complex of all, uh, and why people are saying, well, why is he getting Nobel Prize? We still have problems. The problem is uh, the ball. Romans have been suppressed for years, historically, the kind of thing that uh, Hasi was talking about. These folk, folks expect, uh, expect Hamid, their own, mm -hmm. to respond to their need. Their need is uh, youth need employment. Their need is the need to either uh, uh, suppress people who uh, suppressed them before, respond in kind. Uh, and all this dynamic, all this is taking place at the same time that Ethiopia is trying to attract international investment that will eventually produce jobs for the people. Summit has really uh, uh, thin, it's a very thin line to play. So they take the repressive role and begin now locking these people back in jail? Or should they go the uh, democratic way and create environment for civil discourse mm -hmm. and awareness to create jobs you know, for these people to increase international investment? He has a very tough decision to make and only time is going to tell.